here's your presentation so, uh, and feel free to walk us through. This is Alex Flores, our XO, and he'll walk us through his presentation. Thank you. So you're, you're going to be presenting, right, Pedro? But I'll be, I'll be talking. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Let me um, let's have a copy of the presentation here. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so uh, I think everybody knows me, so I don't have to present myself. But um, real quick before I begin, uh, I just want to have a special thanks for uh, Francisco Capellan and Emily Neerman for, for setting this up for us. Uh, they've been working long hours uh, to uh, have this program for us today, and I just couldn't continue without just mentioning them. So again, both of them, thank you very much. I mean, everybody else in the staff has been working a lot, but those people specifically uh, in regards to organizing the classes and getting the emails together and the planning, stuff like that, I just, you know, I just have to mention them. So, um, so today I'm going to talk about the organizational structure and the position numbering system. So... If there are two things that I want you to get from this presentation today is I want you to know what an organization is, what the purpose is, uh, and I will talk about the MCC organization. Number two is what is your role in the MCC organization, okay? And how we, did you, how we use the position number system as a tool for defining those roles in the organization. So Pastor Pedro, next slide. My... Let me see. Do you see this next slide, or am I am I supposed to be sharing, Pastor Pedro? Are you seeing the screen? Did I mess something up? Sorry. Let me go and make sure that you have what you need. Oh, I can share. Okay, I can. Okay, no, I have the host disabled. Oh. No, that's really? not the presentation. The yes, but it's not the right presentation. This isn't it. Yes. This. That's it. Okay. So next page. Okay, thank you very much. So um, I wanted to define, first of all, uh, what an organization, an organizational structure is. We, we tend to overload and, 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 and use those uh, phrases together. So an organization refers to the collection of people who are involved in pursuing a shared purpose. You cannot have an organization if one group does one thing and another group does another. This is a common goal that everybody in the organization will have. Now, sometimes we tend to use the word organizational, the, the phrase organizational structure as an organization. And the organizational structure basically is how are those activities defined, the coordination, the supervision, and how do we allocate those tasks towards completing the goals of the organization, okay? Uh, I do that a lot. I mean, when you say about the organization, I mean the organizational structure. They're kind of synonymous, but they're two different things. I just wanted to, to define that. Now, one of the main examples, and I like to use that, I've used it in Pathfinder for many years in Pathfinders, is in the book of Exodus. Um, there's a story in the book of Exodus when Moses and the Israelites had left Egypt. And uh, I think it was about 600,000 men and children that left with Moses. And then one day, uh, Jethro, who's Moses' uh, father-in-law, comes to visit him. And he notices that Moses is uh, uh, from sunrise to sunset, he is like judging over people like, you know, imagine 600,000 people, at least, you know, we didn't count the women here, but imagine almost a million people. You're in the desert, it's hot, people have issues. So he's like judging from early in the morning or to the evening, you know, leading, doing stuff. And he's all busy and Jethro sees, hey, wait a second, you know, you, you, you're spending so much time working with all these people, you need to learn to organize. Now, uh, Pastor Pedro, go to the next slide. So this is actually from the NKJV, it says Books of Exodus. He says, uh, both of you and these people you, who are with you will surely wear yourselves out. Hey, if you're going to be from, one, from, from sunrise to sunset all doing that one thing, you're not going to have time for anything else. You want to have time to, to, to spend time with God or talk to God, the God. For this thing is too much for you, and you're not able to perform it by yourself. So you shall teach them the statutes and the laws and show them the way in which they must walk and work they must do. In other words, show them the same ideals, the same goals that you have in, your, in, 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 in what you're doing. Moreover, 
You should select from all these people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place them such and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of ten of tens. Notice how the organization structure is developing. And let them judge the people at all times. Then it will be that every great matter they shall bring to you, you know, Moses, but every small matter they themselves shall judge. So it will be easier for you, so they will bear the burden with you. This is the same type of organization you're going to see in the public sector, the government, military, uh, in the private sector, companies, corporations, even a doctor's office, at the church, you know, the division, the union, conference, you know, even the local church. And even, for example, in Pathfinders, you have the conference, your areas, and your clusters, okay? Um, next slide, please, uh, please, Pastor Pedro. There's three things, three key items that I get from this passage. This is not in your test. This is something you'll eventually learn as you do your leadership coursework. Uh, and, and I highlight those in blue. One of them is called, okay, so one of them is one person cannot do the job alone. So how do you divide or you allocate those tasks? And this is what professionally we call the span of control. Uh, an example of that is like 10 years ago when my son was in middle school, uh, the school that he was zoned in, uh, they had an issue with overpopulation of students. Probably there still is. I don't know. My son just graduated from high school, so uh, I, I don't keep up with uh, you know, how the county is, but he was at FLA. So it, back then, I remember one of the teachers telling me that the, the span of control, in other words, the ratio of the number of students per teacher was... 16 to 1. In other words, once you start having 17 or 18 students per teacher, now it becomes, the, the efficiency starts lagging, basically. So that's the span of control. is the number of people that you can successfully assign to or manage by yourself. Okay? Now, a more a close example. Yes? Oh, sorry. I thought I heard someone. Now, a more closer example is if you guys have been taking the FEMA classes, as a matter of fact, the first one, the IS-100C uh, in the Eastern Command System, it mentions that the optimal for a leader to subordinates is one to five. And I think I gave you one of the answers to the test, but anyways, it's there. Okay. Um, so that's for span of control. Uh, and, 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 and as you grow in your leadership, depending on the, according to the task, at hand, uh, you can tend to gauge how many people did you need uh, for that. Uh, and I would explain to you later as, as we go over the MCC organization how it's divided, okay? Uh, the next thing is you have to provide a set of norms or rules for people to follow the same way. And this is basically the, the culture of the organization, okay? Um, in order for everybody, as I defined earlier, the, the organization, in order for everybody to follow the same goals, you have to teach them what those goals and you have to teach them what the culture is, okay? Last but not least is you have to delegate or assign those people, your subordinates, you know, you, you have to assign captains for, for that who follow the same norms and the culture and the spirit of organization you defined. In other words, if I'm gonna have, let's say 100 people, it's gonna be hard for me to handle 100 people. So I can, hand, I can have some people between me and them that they have the same type of mentality, culture, and structure, and they can assist me with leading the organization. And this is what we call the organizational structure or the chain of command. So uh, who, the chain of command is defined as to who are the people above me and who are the people below me. And they should have the same type of goals and culture that we have in the organization, okay? Um, by the way, if anybody has questions, please raise your hand. I could address those as we continue. I, I don't mind questions within the, um, within the, uh, the, the, the presentation. Uh, one thing about organization structure, uh, it reminds me of the Pathfinder song, We Are Soldiers. If you recall, there's a part in the song where you say, you know, if I, I think it was something I forgot. Uh, I'm trying to think of the words. If I go down, I give the past the flag or the banner to somebody else, and that person just keeps marching on, basically. One of the things about the organization is, hey, if, if something were to happen to me, 
my delegates can keep the mission for me. Okay, so those people who are signed as delegates, you're signed as heads, you you should be in communication with them. You should you you should have people that are with you so that if you're out, they can just continue following the organization. Um, another example, uh, and this is something when I graduated from college in my first job, there was some leadership classes I was taking. We had to read a book called Flight of the Buffalo. And it was really interesting, something I learned over there because when when I finished college, it was mid '90s, and there was a transition between the '80s and '90s style of management. In the '80s, my understanding was that a lot of times it was boss tells you to do something and you do it and that's it, right? No questions asked. Uh, so one of the, the the main thing that the the book stresses is "Flight of the Buffalo" is the example that. Indians, American Indians or native Indians in the past, uh, if they needed to catch a herd of buffalo or a group of buffalo, it was easier to find who the alpha male buffalo was. Once you, you noticed, you found out what it was, just go after the alpha buffalo. Once you take the alpha buffalo down, the rest of the buffalo would just stand there and they don't know, they're disorganized, can't do anything. Makes it easier for to catch a herd. So what the book is stressed was you want to and then the key word was empower the people underneath you, empower your subordinates or empower, empower your, 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 your sub-captains so that they can make the right decisions if you're not able to be around, okay? It's a good book if you can uh, uh, pick it up and, and read that. It's, again, it's called Fly the Buffalo. Uh, next page, Pastor Pedro. Okay, so now I'm going to define, okay, so... Uh, I just went over what an organization is uh, and an organizational structure. Now I'm going to go over what the Florida Conference MCC organization is going to look like, uh, or looks like, I'm sorry. Uh, and this is defined, this is de defined by uh, Pastor Cevallos' manual. We're following the same thing that we're doing in other conferences. And at the conference level, you have the brigade, okay? And just like in the military, you're going to have your battalions, your companies, your platoons, and the squad, right? But the brigade at the Florida Conference level, this is the lead organization for the rest of the MCC program at the Florida Conference. Now, for those who you are, are new, uh, a simple way I remember the, the order, the battalion, company, platoon, squad, it's in alphabetical order. So you have it's BCPS, battalion, company, platoon, and squad, okay? Um, the way it is right now, because we are small in numbers as we're growing, if, if you were to match it to kind of like what we do in, in Pathfinders or Adventurers, uh, well, right now it will be a company will be areas and your platoon and your squad will be like your cluster or your local churches. Uh, that's the way it will be. In the, sorry, that's the way it's right now. In the future, as we grow, those battalions would end up being what the areas should be. So as you can see, there's the, the organization is both uh, expandable or like they say in my field, scalable as the program grows or the number of people grow in the organization. Okay. So again, in the future would be battalion will be kind of like what the areas will be, but right now is because of numbers, a company would be what the areas would be. Sorry. You have a question? Sorry, I heard some noise in the background. Okay, so let me know if you have questions. Okay, so the most important piece, I believe, in the organization is the squad or the squads in the platoon. Now, I wanted to draw this to just give you a quick perspective that every person is important in the organization, even at the squad or the team level. Your basic unit or your basic cell is what we call a team, right? Uh, a team is composed of four or five people, and a team would be led by a team lead. By the way, uh, if you hear the term strike team, is the same thing as a team. So when you go on missions, the minimum amount, amount of people we will send is a team. Uh, a team, the, 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 the basic ranks from E1 through E4 or E5 will be assigned to a team. Uh, in this slide also, I wanted to show that two teams would follow a squad, and it's, it's led by a squad leader, and then four squads would join would be up for a platoon. Now, there's two officers 
in the platoon. Now, by the way, this is a military uh, army organization. You have a platoon sergeant who's in charge of the four squads, and you have a platoon leader who's usually the rank of a second or first lieutenant. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Okay, so this is the army organization. Pastor Pedro, next slide. So now I'm going to go over. Oh, Pastor Pedro, sorry. Okay. Did, were you in the slide before? Sorry, I was looking at the two screens. So this is the U.S. Army platoon organization. So now we're going to discuss the MCC organization at a platoon level. So a um, couple of things through here. So from the bottom, you're going to see the squads led by the squad leader. Uh, you're still going to have the platoon sergeant, who is the person in charge of the platoon of the squads, basically. Um, real quick here, I hear some noise in the background. Sorry, if you guys please uh, go mute. Um, I had a question on the, on the organization. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I, uh, so you said that there's uh, one sergeant in charge of the platoon, and then there's an officer also in charge of the platoon. Um, what's the difference between the, the the sergeant and the staff sergeant within the platoon? Okay. Uh, so uh, let me, uh, Pastor Pedro, if you don't mind going back to one slide. Okay. So um, the the teams are led by a sergeant E5. It's what they call a buck sergeant or a vanilla sergeant, basically. The squad leader on the right, the dark blue, is your, is your staff sergeant E6 by rank. The platoon sergeant is a rank E7 or sergeant first class. Okay? So there's the, the role called squad leader. The rank of that role is staff sergeant. The platoon sergeant is the lead of all of the entire platoon. The role is platoon sergeant. The rank is sergeant first class. Did, did I answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, next slide again, uh, Pastor Pedro, thank you. That's a good question, by the way, thank you. Okay, so um, to, to follow up on that question, and if, if you look on the box near the bottom, it's a sergeant, platoon sergeant, right? Sergeant first class, that's rank of E7. Now notice underneath it, there's a role ID. I'm gonna get to that uh, in a couple of minutes. The, the role ID basically is, is the, the, the role assigned to that person and the number that is assigned to that person, okay? Now for MCC, you're still gonna have a platoon leader, but notice that there's just two roles added as part of the MCC. One of them is assistant platoon leader. Uh, eventually we're gonna talk about the liaison or it could be somebody else who uh, helps assist with the platoon leader. And that person could be a second lieutenant, different role ID. But also on the right, very important, we're gonna have a chaplain for each platoon. Now, a chaplain, by the means of the word, is a person who provides religious uh, guidance and services to the platoon. Uh, unlike the military, in, in other words, different from the US military, the warrant officers in the military are higher than enlisted, but lower than the commissioned officer. So they're higher than your sergeants and lower than your second lieutenants. In the MCC organization, uh, we took those warrant officers' ranks to denote as a symbol that those people are assigned to be chaplains. So they are alongside the enlisted officers. They, they, they uh, don't lead the, insist, the enlisted, but the enlisted officers don't lead over them. It's just a separate rank. Think of them as, as like the Levites, basically. Okay. So in the platoon, you have a person with a rank, a warrant officer one, who would be your chaplain. Okay. Um, next page, please, Pastor Pedro. Okay, so we said earlier that a number of platoons will form a company. Just as you have four squads, who, three or four squads who will form a platoon, a platoon will be about 40 to 44 people. A number of platoons will form a company. So a company could be three or four platoons. As you can see in the bottom, you have platoon one, two, three, and four, okay? Uh, the company is very much similar to platoon. You're gonna have a sergeant in charge of the sergeants in the platoon. Uh, some people who call them the company sergeant, uh, the actual rank of that person will be a first sergeant for the company. And that will be an E9 basically. Um, just like a platoon, you're gonna have a chaplain. And the chaplain will be a chief warrant officer two or W2 who reports to the company commander. And then another position that is assigned because a company, well, if you think of 44, 40 to 44 people, you could have up to 180 people in a company. Uh, depending on the size of the company, the company commander would have an executive officer, and that will be a person of rank first lieutenant. By the way, if I use the term commanding officer or 
CO, they're the synonymous. If I use the word XO or executive officer, they're synonymous. So XO is a short term for executive officer. CO is a short name for commander, basically. Okay. Um, so a company commander or company CO is, is, is a rank of captain. The executive officer or assistant officer, the XO, will be a rank of first lieutenant. Okay. And the organization is pretty much similar to a platoon, but at a higher level. Okay. Uh, and I, I want to stop right here and ask questions. I mean, ask if, if anybody has a question because next graph is going to be a lot busier and I need you to understand this stuff first. Any, any questions? Any, I think everybody got this. Okay. So Pastor Pedro, next slide. Okay. This is a very busy slide and there's a reason for that. If at a company you have about 200 people, if you multiply that times four, three or four, you easily can have between 450, 600 people in your battalion. That's a lot of people. So it needs to have a, a larger number of supporting people, which we define as staff, to assist the battalion commander. So let me explain this. Uh, so for the, for the, on the bottom, you're gonna see the companies, one, two, three, and four, which are led by the company commanders. In your battalion, you're gonna have a battalion commander, right? You're still gonna have your sergeant for the battalion. Now that person will be what's called the sergeant major or rank of E10, that's at the top right box. On the top left box, you're gonna have the executive officer or XO, which is gonna be the rank of major, right? And that person is directly assisting the battalion commander. Now the big stuff is in the middle. And those are what's called the staff positions or the S positions. Uh, because of the size of the organization, those are gonna be people directly working for the battalion commander, but they're assisting in very specific areas, right? And we call those people the staff officers, right? So we have the S1, S2, S3, S4. There's more S's in the military, but to keep the same number and setup the way we have in the incident command system, in the FEMA incident command system, we shrunk those numbers to match the same type of organization, okay? So each of these people would be a captain, except for the chaplain, which would be a chief warrant officer. So the first one you're going to see on the top left is your planning officer, your plans officer, S1. This is the person who's going to be in charge of uh, preparation of operational plans, the traffic, the, the communications, uh, maintain accountability of the MCC personnel, assemble task forces, things like that. That's your planning officer there. That's, that's the main thing that he does. Your S2 next to it, it's your, uh, in the military is usually the intelligence officer, but that position, we put that as your chaplain for the battalion. And that's basically the person who provides the spiritual guidance and goals to the battalion, the mental and well-being and the morale of the people in the battalion. That's your S2. Your S3 will be your operations officer. He's a person who develops, implements a strategy, the tactics to, to carry out the, the, the commander's objectives. He's the person who organizes, assigns, and supervises the resources. Also, this is the person who manages the, sp the staging areas for, uh, for events. And I'm, we're, we're gonna go through an example of that uh, at the end of this slide. Um, your logistics officer is the person for ordering, obtaining, maintaining, accounting, people resources, equipment, materials, supplies. Uh, he also provides the communication between those resources. Okay, that's your logistics officer. And last but not least is your medical officer. Uh, simply enough, this is a person to uh, be in charge to uh, help us with the medical needs of the organizations. Uh, the organization. Um, not listed here is your safety slash security officer, more the safety officer. In the incident command system, the safety officer is a person that when people go out on missions, make sure that they are safe. Uh, and the security, which is pretty much at a defense, it could be something that could be rolled up to the safety officer, okay? Um, now, under the medical officer, you're gonna have your nursing officer, clinical support, preventive maintenance officer. They're the aides assistant, the medical officer. And just as the medical officer has aides, each of the major staff officers would have an aide or a deputy officer assisting them, okay? That's what each of those positions are in the battalion. Uh, any questions so far? Oh, oh, and by the way, this organization you see the battalion rolls up over at the brigade level. 
uh, under Pedro's staff. This is, for example, uh, you know, me as executive officer, Dan as uh, the uh, plans officer, uh, Odi as the logistics officer, operations that positions vacant, and chaplain, which is a Pastor Rodriguez. Okay. Any questions so far? This is um, I've just defined the MCC organization before I go to the position numbering system. Good morning, Alex. This is Victor. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, hey, Victor. Yes, go ahead. I, I believe they should put the names of every person who's in charge, that they would know who are in charge, from the top to the bottom, from uh, pastor, from the, the general, all the way down to everybody, have a list of everybody's name on it, that they would know who's the person. That's, uh, that's, that's a good that. point. Develop an orchard. Yes, yes. Um, yes. I don't have that defined in my presentation because I just want to take it, take it to the battalion level. Uh, but yes, I'll, I'll, I'll take a note of that. Thank you very much. And I'll, I'll actually, I'll, I'll develop something before the end of the presentation of Pastor Pedro, if you don't mind, on a, on a PowerPoint. So by, by the end of the day, I'll, I'll, I'll develop a quick, you know, PowerPoint just slide so to show that. But th thank you, Victor, for that question. A any other questions about the entity organization before I go to the position numbering system? Okay, so let me go back to what I was talking about, the role IDs for each of those positions, okay? You notice in my last few slides, for every title, for every rank, there's a role ID associated with that. So Pastor Pedro, if you don't mind, the next slide. So in order to help us uh, define what these roles are and assign people to those roles, we created what's called the position numbering system. So every member in the Florida Conference Brigade will be assigned a number according to their position in the organization, right? And if you look on the right-hand side, and, and I think you got a copy of this when you registered into EMCC, uh, this is a four number, dash three number, dash one number type code. Uh, remember I was saying at the, at the beginning, is when you think of the, the, the organization as think of an alphabetical Battalion, Company, Platoon, Squad, B, C, P, S. Those are the first four digits are. So the first digit is basically what battalion you're in. Second digit is what company you're in. Third digit is what platoon you're in. And your fourth digit is what squad you're in. So this first set of four digits, we call that the tier position. The last four digits is what we call the roll number and duplicate. So the, those roll IDs that you've been seeing is the next set of digits, okay? Uh, an example I wanted to give in this page is, for example, uh, the, the platoon leader for the first battalion, first company, first platoon, would be 1110. Now, where do we get the 006? Uh, Pastor Pedro, next slide. So there's a list of roles, which we have defined. It's on the right side of the slide. And you're going to go down the list and it's got 006. That's the platoon leader. So the platoon leader would be 006. And if he's a platoon leader for the first battalion, first company, first platoon, it'd be one, 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 zero. Now he would have a zero because the platoon leader is not assigned to a squad. He's a leader himself. So that would be a zero in there. Anybody who's joining the MCC corps at first as a recruit is assigned temporary ID called zero, zero, zero dash nine, nine, nine. And those are basically not yet assigned to a, a team or a squad basically. Okay. Now, I wanted to show an example here, the, the teams, since most of you will be working on that, you're going to have a team leader who's a rank of sergeant in E5 with a role ID of 002. So a team lead, it's defined when you look at the table on the right, it's a person going to be a rank of sergeant because that person has a role ID of 002. So basically, the role, the role is what drives the rank for that position. Okay? Any questions about this before I go to the next slide? Okay, so next slide, Pastor Pedro. We just go back to the Florida Conference MCC organization. Uh, so depending on where you're assigned, if you're a squad of a platoon or a company, you get assigned to that role. Now the question becomes, what about the local church sponsors? So you could have, you could have a church become a sponsor of an MCC unit and that church depending on the number of people they have assigned to that unit, that person, that, 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 that corp could be, that the church, sorry, hosting the MCC could be a squad or it could be a platoon. Usually it's going to be a squad. And by the way, uh, you could have members or MCC that their church is not part of MCC, but no, I'm sorry, if their church does not have an MCC corp, they can join an MCC corp 
we could, we'd assign them to a church nearby, okay? That's how we grow the squads and the platoons. So most of the time, at the, or at the beginning, the local church would com be composed of a squad. But if you have a large church, think of it, for example, in, like in Pathfinders, you have to have a church that could have 100 members or 100, you know, Pathfinders, then that could probably be more of a platoon, okay? Now, Pastor Pedro, next slide. So in the local church, there's going to be a special position called the liaison. And that person is, when, when, sorry, when the church, sorry, when, when a church corp is registered, right, one of the uh, requirements that we have is that the church board would approve of a church corp or unit and that they assign what we call a liaison. This liaison is going to be the communications person between the brigade staff and that church unit. The liaison could be a rank of a team lead or squad lead or platoon lead according to the size of their unit, okay? And that precision, that person liaison will be our main communi communication person. So what I wanted to present in this slide is that the local church board, number one, must give approval to run a unit, and two, to appoint a liaison. That liaison could be the commanding officer or that liaison could be, for example, the, a few slides back could have been the assistant person, but that would be the point person we would communicate between the brigade staff and the church. Um, any questions? And this is my last slide. Um, I just wanted to explain the, the relationship between the church and the, um, and the uh, uh, MCC organization. So, any, uh, any questions? I'm done with my presentation. Actually, next slide, basically questions, Pastor Pedro. So any questions that you guys have about the organization or, um, uh, or the position numbering system? Yes, I have a question. Uh, uh, this this PowerPoint presentation, uh, could we get, get our hands on that? Yes, once we're done with the presentation, the adjutant, and actually, I think the adjutant has uh, collected these on a website, but the idea is to, to have the recordings and also these presentations available for everybody. Okay, great. Yeah, because it has a lot of good information that, um, you know, I, I have to look at to really understand. Yeah, me too. I need to go through it like slowly motion to, to, re <clears throat> to really understand because it's giving me a hard time to figure it out. <laughs> Yeah, and I think was it's critical something... for, for everyone to, to, to know this, too, every member. What, was there something in specific that you, did you want me to go for, for just a minute to go over? Or is it just a lot of information contained in, in, in 30 minutes? I if think I did, I'm sorry? If I'm sorry, I, repeat may, that again? I would like to specifically point to that that information that Alex presented is located in the organizational structure manual and in the positioning numbering system manual. Both of those can be found on the Florida Conference website under the forms and manuals tab and you go to manuals and then you can sit and read and those pictures are sh shared there and also in the email I'll send out later today I can I will attach all the presentation powerpoints for your review as well. Thank you, Emily. Thank you. Okay. A anything in specific that uh, you had questions about? Or, or, or that was it? It was just the, the amount of content. Was it the amount yes, of content? Yeah. Go ahead, uh, yeah, well, what, what I wanted to say is, I'm sorry, let me turn mine off. Uh, what I wanted to say is, Alex, that uh, it was very well explained, but I think what it is is so much at the same time that we have to really look at the papers in order to uh, get a good view on exactly what it is, all the positions, because it's a lot, it is a lot of information at the same time. So it's not that it wasn't well explained, it was, but we really got to get a focus on, on all the material so we could look at it, you know, constantly and, and get used to all the different, you know, uh, positions that people have in the, in the group settings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me comment something about the suggestion that Victor uh, made. Um, 
regarding the, the names in each position, remember we, we um, just start organizing this in the Florida conference. There is a lot of positions that have been vac um, vacated. That is, we, um, um, in order to fill those positions, we need to advance um, to see which uh, people is um, qualified for that position. So if you see things with not names, but the rank is there, is because we try to organize um, uh, this, this uh, MCC in, in Florida Conference. So be patient, uh, every position will be filled, but in meantime, um, we try to better organize uh, the MCC here. Thank you. Pastor Abby, you had a comment? Yes, I have a question, a clarifying question for Alex, that since we are recording, I would like it to, to stay there because maybe someone can benefit from the question. Uh, Alex, the, the, the structure is simple. If some people have been in, in the cadets somewhere in the world, we're not inventing anything. We're just dividing each squad into two teams so we can uh, be so we can use the same wording of the third uh, structure inside the, the, the medical cadet core. So we will have two teams per squad, but we're going to have the same thing. We have a squad, we have a, a platoon, uh, and so forth. And so so it's not it's not complicated. That's the only difference that I find from other parts of the world where I've seen cadets uh, working. Is the same structure. The only thing different now is the numbering system so th that is more organized. So you don't have to get lost with the, with the numbering system. Uh, the numbering system is just where you are, the first number in, this, in the whole structure, and then what is your role? What, what are you assigning in the medical cadets? Uh, in my case, I'm in the number 17, and I'm in the chaplaincy program. So uh, don't, don't get lost with the numbers. Just, just think, what can I do? Where can I serve? And who's above me and who's going to be beneath me. But I think it's, it's the same structure in, uh, that, that, we have, that we have had in different parts of the world. But I have a question, uh, Alex. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I got, uh, I understood that the liaison in the church, or for the church, has to be in the, in the medical kind of court structure. It's not, it's not a, a random person that, that is connecting the, the MCCs with the church. It has to be in the in the medical cadet corps structure in order to be the liaison. Uh, uh, is that correct? Um, the, the liaison and Emily, you you can come and interject if if I'm wrong. Um, the liaison would be a new person in the board of the church who could speak for the MCCs. Yes, but so what the, I see what, the uh, church liaison does not have to be a member of the Florida Conference MC MCC. They may be a member, but it does not require it. Okay. The church liaison is appointed by the local church board to serve as the liaison between the MCC unit, which their church is hosting, and the church itself. Where, My so question. for instance, the platoon leader is assigned by the Florida Conference Brigade. However, the t talking between the platoon leader and the local church board is the church liaison, and the church liaison is chosen by the local church. My, my question would be then, the liaison, if they are not part of the NCC, they have in their heart what we have to be representing us over there. Or is it just something on the air? Because if I'm not interested on the NCC and I can be the liaison, but I don't have the interest for the, the medical cadets, I just have the interest to be in some position between the, the board and the, and, and, the, and the medical corps. So if that person in, is not part of us, maybe the interest of that person is not the same as we have. Possibly. 
And that's why the local church should choose that position very carefully. I do yeah. see Amy yes. Hunter has her hand up. Amy, would you like to ask a question? Well, I'm new in this and I do have a question is, um, you were talking about position and is this any qualification for those position that you talking about, um, Alex or the role that each one is the church or a some, um, degree or something they had to be part of the qualification well let, 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 thank you for asking that question there, there was one thing that i, I was going to say uh, and, and going back to what pastor rodrigo was saying eventually those role ids will be defined kind of like a job description so if you become a platoon leader role id i think it was zero zero six that these are the requirements for platoon leader for that position. You could be a platoon leader and you could be working towards those requirements. Eventually, and this is a, a class later, I think Dr. Kirstead would be presenting, would be go over in the curriculum and there's gonna be a mapping of the coursework for those ranks, for those positions in the MCC program. Now also, when you apply for the MCC program, the personnel board would review your background, your qualifications and things like that. And if there, for example, recommendations provided by your liaison or your platoon leader, they could, be, they could put you for a certain position. You may not have all the requirements, but you are working towards getting those requirements. Uh, for example, um, you could be working towards a platoon leader you already started the MCC. You may have already taken, I don't know, the first aid classes, the CPR classes. You may have already started your, 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 uh, your, your the, the spiritual coursework, but mm -hmm. you have not completed some of the female leadership classes. Does that mean you cannot be a platoon leader? Well, no, we can assign you a platoon leader. And in good faith, yeah, you're, you're, you're completing those requirements, you know, with a certain period. So as we develop, no, I don't think everybody's going to have those requirements, but yeah, there's going to be a set of requirements for, for these or those positions that are posted. And, and, and we're going to explain that in, in a few you know, yeah, later. Very time. good. Thank you, Alex, for your presentation. As you can see, organization is very important to making MCC work and understanding the organizational structure will help facilitate and keep things running smoothly. Thank you, Alex, for giving us the Exodus 18 foundation where Moses was ordered by God and through his father-in-law Jethro to organize Israel, uh, the people of God, so that Moses wouldn't get burned out. And this is the idea here, that everyone carrying their load, everyone understanding their role, makes everyone able to lift and we can do something together we could never do on our own. And that's the beauty of this organization. So thank you so much. For presenting and yes it's new to most of you so there'll be some questions it'll take some time um, but thank you for getting an introduction to that and that resource is available online and as Emily said it will also be something that we share in a follow-up to this presentation today